Hey everybody, this is Dan with Weld Fever. Today we're going to be doing some vertical MIG welding and this is a direct result of a viewer request. So stick with me, here we go. Hey, before we get started today, I'd like to take a minute to reintroduce you to my website, weldfever.com. And I say reintroduce you because this site's been on for a while, but I just revamped the whole thing. It's got a brand new look to it, and we've got a lot more interesting things for people to take a look at on here. For example, uh, we now have a welding forum, and it's going to be a great new addition to the site. It's going to allow people to come on, make some comments, ask some questions, and just have a nice friendly dialogue about all of our welding related uh, questions, comments, tips, you name it. Hey, another thing we're doing is I've had some people comment and ask me about Weld Fever merchandise, Weld Fever related uh, t-shirts and hats, so I'm starting off by uh, offering a potential hat design. And I've got two uh, designs here and I'm asking for your help to determine which hat we go with. Now one of them just plainly says Weld Fever and the other one says Weld Fever and has the tagline underneath it. As you can see on the bottom of the um, frame shot right now I have a poll and I'm asking you the viewers to uh, rate or to vote on which design you like better. Style number one which has just Weld Fever on it or style number two. And as you can see there are the results of the poll right in front of you. So hopefully you guys will visit weldfever.com today. Now on to the show. Okay so what we're gonna do first is go over some of the parameters of the machine and some of this is gonna be a little bit counterintuitive. Now I'm doing vertical up MIG welding primarily today discussing it in terms of uh, doing it for structural applications. If you're doing vertical uh, MIG welding for anything else, thin gauge or what have you, it's a little bit different. Uh, the parameters are different, the techniques are a little different, and the way you do it is different because of the desired outcome for the different uh, uses. So I'll try to explain it the best I can. Um, hopefully everybody will follow along okay. I know that on today's uh, topic today, uh, we're probably going to get into some debates about how best to run this stuff. And you know what? I welcome everybody's opinions on this, most definitely. And so anyway, let's get uh, going with this. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing the old tried and true uh, Lincoln Electric MIG welder, the 175 HD that I use. You notice my settings here, uh, I'm going to be doing structural MIG welding today. And yet, my settings are not on maximum. And you might think, well, why is that? Well, there's a very good explanation for that. I'm going to show you right now. All right, so get a load of this ugly thing here. Uh, why am I showing this? Well, because this is where I laid down some test welds just prior to getting ready to actually do this video. And the reason why I'm showing it to you is to show you how ugly some of this thing stuff can come out. Now, these welds here, and as well as these here and here, and all these drippy, terrible, ugly welds, this is a result, as a result, of putting my machine at maximum. Maximum voltage and nearly maximum wire feed speed, at least maximum for the voltage allowed. What ended up happening is it's very counterintuitive because you think, okay, this is, first of all, you can see this is a cruciform that's completely filled on all sides. It's roughly three inches thick solid steel, solid weld deposit. You would think that by cranking this guy up, you're going to go ahead and just blast right into this plate and you're not going to have any problems, you're going to penetrate well and you're going to have a good weld bead, but that is not necessarily the case. First of all, when I welded this, I welded it cold. I did not preheat it in any way, and so therefore it was more difficult for penetration to occur. Because the wire feed speed was so high, uh, it left all of this excess uh, weld material right on the top here. Even though I was trying to scoot along, at a good rate and even though I could definitely see the wire was piercing the material and was getting in there deeply it still left a ton of weld material on top that was just ugly and really not able to be worked with so what I'm saying here is it's again it's a little counterintuitive you have to 
in some instances back off of your weld machine. Now, if you're dealing with a 140 amp machine, like one of the smaller 140, 130 uh, machines, or even the 100 amp machines, MIG machines, then probably on those you'll have to blast it all the way. Mine is a 175 amp machine, so when I crank mine all the way to the limit, this is what I get. If you have like a, a 210 machine, a 250 machine, it's going to be the same thing. If you take that thing all the way to the maximum, this is what you're going to get when you're trying to weld on the face of other weld material. Now, if you were welding in a groove or some other kind of uh, area that you were trying to fill, perhaps cranking it up higher in terms of the wire fee speed and the voltage would work out better. But in this application, and this application only, where I'm welding right onto the face of pre-existing metal to try to build up basically a pad, it does not work. It's not effective. So because of that, I have to alter my settings, and I have to bring them down to about a midway point. I have six settings, excuse me, five settings on my machine, A through E. I found that an, a C setting, a middle-of-the-road setting, with a relatively low wire speed in comparison worked the absolute best. And now here on this chunk of metal uh, <laughs> are the only decent looking welds on it and this is once I dialed in my machine to that setting I just mentioned. Take a look at this. This looks like a continuous piece. Now here I was playing around with some other settings but look at this particular section right here. I've got a nice flat weld bead they penetrated into the plate sufficiently. There's no undercut of any kind. And when I stacked them next to each other to make a pad, they fused into each other very well. You see there's a little slight indication of a line, but not much. It's pretty much fused all together, which creates a nice pad all the way across the face here. This is what we're looking for in terms of padding something vertical up. Okay, with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so here's what we have to work with. It's, again, a cruciform face. It's nearly all filled in, but there's a little bit of room left, and so this is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some passes, and I'm going to go across this thing from bottom up. Now, I'm going to do vertical up welding primarily. I may do a vertical down, but keep in mind that, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, this is structural application. And in structural applications, you want to do vertical up welding when it comes to vertical that is because vertical down has lesser penetration than vertical up does so if you're concerned about penetration if you're concerned about a structural application then most definitely you want to do it all in the vertical up rather than vertical down Okay, I'm going to have to readjust because I don't want to get in the way of the camera. Well, I'm going to not edit this and just leave it in so you can see. <laughs> It'll be an interesting uh, kind of behind the scenes, I think. Okay, so now I'm going to do a restart, and a restart is simple. You just start above, come down, and trace the outer edge of your weld, and then just keep going. So hopefully it'll look successful. Here we go. Now here as I weld this, I want you to take note of something extremely important when it comes to any kind of MIG welding really, and that is the length of my stick out, or the length of uh, the contact tip to the workpiece. You can see here that I am in there really, really tight. Uh, the appropriate stick out is about a quarter of an inch, and I'm in there definitely a quarter of an inch. So much so that you can't even really see the electrode. Okay, so now I'm going to take just a quick moment to show you the second weld bead. You can see here, here is the second bead, this is the first bead. Uh, there's a little bit of a line here, more so than I probably would prefer to have, but in either case, it's not as noticeable in person, it's more noticeable on camera because of the way the lights hit it. But anyway, uh, there's good fusion once again between this first bead and this bead. And again, good fusion on the inside face here against the plate itself. Everything's going in solid. I don't see any issues of rollover. I had a little difficult time with the second part because I didn't want to get in the way of the camera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and roll. If I get in the way, I apologize, but 
I want to do this right and I'm going to roll it in a high speed so you guys can see the progression all the way down to the end. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. Now, earlier I had mentioned that uh, it was very important, very critical to have that stick out uh, real tight. The reason for that is penetration. If your stick out, that is the distance between your contact tip and the actual plate, is greater than a quarter, about a quarter of an inch or three eighths, then you are going to have less penetration and you're going to have a ropey looking bead, something like a worm, something that looks like a worm just sitting on top rather than a nice flat bead that is going to penetrate. So it's crucial that you get in there. It's probably one of the most common errors that people make when it comes to MIG welding. They wonder why their their weld beads look so fat, why they sit on top, why they look like uh, you know like worms. That's why it's stick out. When you're in there nice and tight to where you basically can't even see the weld going in, you know you're in there correctly. So very, very critical to get that right. Okay, so now even though this is sped up, I want to discuss some technique issues here. First of all, uh, the motion that I'm making as I go up this uh, weld is a gentle side-to-side. -side. It's not really a weave, it's just a side-to-side -side motion and I pause at each side and the reason why I do that is because I'm trying to get uh, both sides to be burned in and fused in properly side to side. Another thing I want to touch on here is uh, my gun angle. I'm going to slow this one down so you can look at it a little bit while I discuss it but my gun angle here is uh, pointed slightly upward uh, so I'm kind of pushing into the puddle uh, the reason for that is because obviously in a vertical position we're fighting against gravity and that will help us to, to keep the, uh, the puddle up there and uh, prevent it from sagging down. Uh, also it helps with penetration. The other thing I want to mention is the angle is about between 5 and 15 degrees, uh, no more no less. Some people uh, occasionally like to do it in a 90 but I prefer this angle, it's more natural and it kind of goes with the uh, the natural curve of the, the gun anyhow. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, side to side motion is my preferred motion for uh, vertical up. I know there are a lot of other fancy ways to do it, but uh, for me that's the tried and true method. Okay, so we've come to a close of another episode here. We're just about done with the welds. It's been a pretty good episode I think, and uh, here's the end result. Uh, looks pretty good. Everything is fused together nicely, just the way I like to see it. Relatively flat face. I mean, obviously nothing is perfect. Uh, but there's a nice, better view of it. Looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with the flatness and the fused nature of it. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Join me on the next one. And don't forget, visit WeldFever.com for all the new goodies. Vote on your favorite cap design and check out the new forum. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.